Greetings! Welcome my fellow Gators to the second part of the project Apophis. In this part uh, we will take a look at the actual finished design. Uh, in the previous part we only looked at the theoretical design and there still was quite a lot of work to actually do. Uh, that work has been done and uh, right now the design is complete and ready for printing. As you can see, um, we or I have also added this kind of uh, bust of uh, Apophis. Um, first of all, let me tell you that I am no artist and I have absolutely no artistic feeling when it comes to faces. So the face is uh, nothing like Apophis, but uh, to me it doesn't matter because that's not the main point of this build, uh, that's, that's the helmet and the mechanism in it. So let's take a look at the mechanism. It works the same way as before. And retracts like this. The only difference now is that there are no collisions, nothing floats in space and everything is attached so everything should be working and uh, we will go back okay yeah obviously i still have to uh, do manual finish uh, when putting the head down but in real life uh, i don't care about that because there will be gravity doing that for me anyway uh what i would like to now show is the model tree i divided it into several pieces uh, or several groups or so, uh, and uh, sub assemblies and now we will take a look so first is the bust itself yeah as you can see it looks nothing like apophis but i don't really care about that um, basically this is just for the for the mask to be attached on it is not really important but you know uh, as you can see it is made out of several pieces just for the convenience uh, when it comes to the printing it so yeah like this piece will slide to, to here and will hold in place and the rest has the same locking mechanism that I use on all my models. So that's about it, that's the easiest thing. Now we have a base. And the base has this one big piece with two attachments and uh, to the end of each attachment comes the end of the serpent helmet. The idea is that the entire helmet will rest on this base, so if needed, the entire helmet could be removed out of the base uh, via this part. So we have first set of connection rods, which go inside, and then we have a, another plate, which comes here. another set of connectors another plate and it goes on and on until the end so another set of connectors another piece another set of connectors and now the head sub-assembly and another set of connectors and all the uh, pins that basically goes through all the connector pieces and that's it now 
uh, now I, I would like to show you a little bit in detail how each uh, subgroup works. So this is the plate 6 and as you can see it is made of several pieces. So we have first this, this one piece. Then there are, as you can see, pins attached and the mirror part, so we have this. And then once again you can see that here we have two holes on each side and in them we will have those pins. And to them we will attach the sides. Yes, it theoretically could be from one piece, but I really don't like long prints, so I decided to do it like this. Okay, that was the plate 6, now plate 5. And yeah, it looks like this. Now uh, here you can see this opening. I am uh, I prepare it for uh, basically uh, another type of connector piece, but there is not no one no not such thing yet, because I'm not sure if it will be necessary. So so far I have this uh, uh, thing prepared, and if needed, then I will simply uh, do it. But in any case. Once again, as you can see, it is done from several pieces, so once again we have this part and it has uh, holes for the pins here, or holes for pins here, so... And we will once again attach a mirror part, yeah, and the idea was that now the two pieces would go together with, the, with another connector piece, but yeah, as I said, I'm not sure if that would be even needed. But if so, then I will simply add it. And then we have uh, holes for the pins here and here. So we will simply put them inside and then attach the rest. And that's it. Okay, here's the entire head. And well, the idea was that if I get rid of the bust, this will be the entire uh, assembly of the helmet that could be uh, detached from the collar and uh, basically be separated from the bust. And this is something if uh, that I would like to do if uh, this mechanism work in real life. And then uh, I would like to do it like this uh, as well in one in one scale. Uh, simply to be uh, easily detachable from the collar. Anyway, now I think it wouldn't hurt to actually uh, show the X section how the mechanism actually works. Oh, one other thing that I forgot to show before we go to that, and that's the head assembly. Uh, as you can see here, we have those face plates. And they are all done in the same manner. They have this groove and here we have this knob and basically it creates one big slider with, as you can see here in this X section, with uh, uh, finish uh, here so those uh, plates cannot slide all the way through. And yeah. Here we have uh, an attachment, so yeah, the entire piece goes up like that. And uh, once again, this is made out of several pieces in uh, simply because of the printing. So this chin is a separate piece. And once again, we are using pins to uh, put them together. This forehead is a separate piece uh, which goes through here. This is obviously a separate piece because it's moving and also this part is a separate piece um, because uh, we obviously have to put the plates uh, through the top and uh, that way uh, when we will print the serpent face it would not need any support material uh, though this part certainly will.
Okay. So that was the face and now we can take a look at the mechanism. Now uh, because we have the exception you can see that all the uh, links are uh, fitted together via various pins and uh, types of washers to accommodate for the uh, space between those. So yeah we can see them here, here and so on and here we have a special kind of link uh, which enables movement only in a specified area to uh, basically ensure proper opening and closing of the mechanism and yeah we can take a look how it actually works Now, before I will continue, I would like to uh, point out one, well, fake, I guess we can say, and which is here in this slider. I Unfortunately, I have to admit, I cannot uh, or I don't know how to uh, make a slider constraint such as this. So the movement is done via a mechanism. That means that uh, the both start uh, and fin start and end position are correct so as you can see now the pin uh, is where it's supposed to be and when we finish uh, it is once again there but the uh, speed of the movement is not uh, like it will be in real life and the same goes for uh, for the faceplate. Now they are slided via mechanism, but there will be no mechanism in real life. Uh, they will be simply uh, operated via gravity. So theoretically, if I took the plate, the bottom plate, and slide it by hand, then it will most certainly be slided up. But the go, uh, the idea is that when uh, the serpent head will go to this position simply by the gravity the uh, faceplate will slide down and then when it's uh, once again put here it will basically stay uh, true to what you can see here it will be yeah, and now because it's under the angle the, the faceplate will slide down So yeah, that's the idea. Okay, so that's basically the mechanism. As I said, it's already uh, ready for uh, 3D printing. But before I actually do that, I want to uh, want to make few uh, test prints like for example all those joints are passive joints yeah so as you can see uh, the pins all have five millimeters and the links have 5.5 a hole so there is a half a millimeter clearance to at least i hope ensure a smooth rotation and this is something i have to test first so i will test uh, so i will print uh, let's say a group of uh, links with pins and I will try to put them together to see if that actually works as needed or if uh, the hole has to be bigger and you know stuff like that before I will go to print every single thing because that will that will be a long print uh, for for those who uh, would like to know the measurement the, the dimensions I will simply do this rough so it will be almost 30 centimeters tall at yeah, 27 and a half centimeters tall so yeah it's it certainly wouldn't be a small thing Okay, 
so yeah this is it this is the model so in the next next part of this series uh, we will see parts of of the build already printed um, maybe uh, I, I am playing with an idea to actually buy a golden filament to print it uh, out of gold. Um, golden filament, of course, not not gold itself. And and uh, that way I wouldn't be uh, needed to actually pr uh, paint it uh, with uh, the, the the links I would do from normal gray or silver and the face yeah i would simply paint that's not a problem okay so this is it this is this is the model of the apophis helm uh, i hope you like it i am kind of uh, proud of the mechanism uh, at least uh, theoretically so hopefully uh, in real life it will work as intended okay so i guess that's all for now i hope you enjoyed it and we will see each other in the next video have a very nice day and bye bye